So today, we are back with the Clown Lips. And we're going to be trying to bypass the load balancing product segmentation practices that uh, EVGA has thrust upon us this generation. So let's try and level this thing up. Hey guys, welcome to Frame Chasers, and the goal of today's video, we're gonna try and power mod the 3090 for the win 3. It, we're gonna try and reload balance it to try and pull more power from the 8 pins rather than the PCI Express slot. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then this video probably doesn't matter to you. It's more for the people that know about the load balancing problem for this card. I have a whole bunch of videos on this, but what we're essentially going to do is I'm going to put one shunt on the PCI Express slot, and then I'm going to double up on the eight pins. So essentially what's going to happen is it, the, the card is going to think that it's pulling more power from the PCI Express slot in relation to the eight pins, and then in theory it should pull more power down from the eight pins, to balance itself out, which is what we want to happen, right? And then I'll probably flash the Kingpin BIOS on top, the uh, the 520 watt one, and that should get us right where we want to be. The uh, the I gotcha of this video is really, I ordered a Bixky water block at the beginning of December, as soon as they came out for pre-order. And I think it got lost in the mail. It's it said that it was on the plane into my country for the last month. So I don't think I'm getting that thing. Um, we're going to be trying this with the EVGA air cooler. Uh, load balancing problems aside, the air cooler is a thick beast. I want to see if the air cooler itself can actually handle 600-ish watts, right? Um, if it can then this might be a good option for people that don't want to water cool their cards, right? A few moments later. Okay, so got the first six of them done on the front here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then one down here. Uh, I'm using glue today. Uh, you guys have seen me do this a million times already, so you use glue if you don't want your warranty to be, you know, bunk. Um... I'm just going to skip the rest of the video to the good stuff. Literally, if you're wondering what the hell is going on, just go back into my channel and find the other content. Um, you don't need to solder the, sh the shunts. You just have to glue them on. That's the way I'm doing it today. So uh, let's put this back together and then get to the back of the PCB. Okay. The back side is done here. Oh my God, this is hard. You'll notice that I have an extra little thing glued down here. Um, what could that be, right? Well... EVGA and all their wisdom put fuses on the rails. So the, um, uh, well, according to like other people, the eight, the eight pin rails have 20 amp fuses. The PCI express rail has a 10 amp fuse. So I'm, I'm shorting the fuse so that it doesn't blow. I mean, it wouldn't blow anyway, but it can't hurt to short it with a wire. So I pretty much just glued a wire over the fuse so in case if something does blow up, it's not the fuse that blows up so EVGA doesn't know that anyone was here tampering with it, right? Always use glue. Always cover your tracks, right? But um, that's pretty much it. Let's put this back together and see what it can do. Okay, that did not work. Do not do that. Do, don't, uh, don't double up on those shunts. Um, so what I did, I put, I put it in, I fired it up, and then what happened was... It, it like turned on and turned off right away. Like kind of the, uh, the same symptom as if you had like a power supply short of some sort. So I was like, holy shit, I just fried my card. I don't know what the hell happened. Um, what I did, I took it all back apart. I took the double. So when I took the, uh, the cooler off, I noticed that the fins were slicing into the thermal pads that I put on the shunts to push them down. So what I think happened 
was the double shunt was a little too thick that the fins were kind of shorting out one of the shunts, I guess. And then that was powering off the GPU. So I took apart, I took off all the double shunts and then I put single shunts back on. And now I just fired it up and it works. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy crap, I did not fry my card. Okay, so we're back to, okay, so all seven shunts are now single shunted, not double shunted. So let's go back up there and see if single shunts do anything. Oh. Okay, so we're loaded up in Windows here. Um, <laughs> it, it worked. Um, I mean, it, uh, it booted. Uh, we're at the single shunt right now. Let's see. Let's load something up here. I got GPU Z open and afterburner. Um, I have not voltage locked this card before. Where the heck's my battle nut here? Here. Oh, there we go. Uh, let's see here. I just, so pretty much all I want to see is whether or not it's going to hit a power limit at one at a 1.1 volt lock. Uh, let's see, full screen borderless, 4K, unlimited frame rate, apply. So let's see what it's doing here. Perf cap, VREL ROP, 1 point, oh! So it looked like, it looks like it, it did work. 99% GPU usage. Look at this. PCI Express slot power is 56. So stock, stock, it was pulling 85 watts. So with the shunt mod, it's still pulling 85 watts. It just shows lower because of the shunt. So let's do a 1.1 volt voltage lock. Let's see if we can get this to do something here. 2100 megahertz. Apply. Oh, it's still showing idle. I haven't even flashed the BIOS yet to the Kingpin one. Um, PCI Express slot power. So look, look at that. It went up by one watt? Two watts? And, and the rails, that doesn't make any sense. The, the rails seem to have gone up by three watts, but the slot power only went up by one watt. But I didn't double shunt. Let's try moving this up a bit more. 2100. Still idling. Okay, so. That seems to have worked. 77% TDP. Yeah, okay. In 4K. An extra watt. Oh, it crashed. Okay, so this, I don't think this is a very good bin. So it looks like the, the behavior is pretty much the same thing as the Strix. Like a game really is not gonna pull more than 600 watts anyway, so I don't even need to flash it. But I know that in Time Spy with the Strix, I definitely did need to flash because the uh, time spy pulls like 750 watts. So what we're going to do, we're going to run a time spy here and I'm going to see if the perf cap actually hits a power limit. And then if it does, we'll flash the uh, kingpin and do it again. But uh, as for gaming workloads, a shunt mod with the stock BIOS is perfectly fine. It doesn't even get, it doesn't even like get hot. Like it doesn't pull any power in gaming. I'm recording this on my phone right now as Time Spy is going. And look at the power draws. 
in relation to the PCI Express power draw is still idling during time spy. So the shunt, the shunt literally fixed the card. It like completely fixed the load balance problem. Look at that. It's pulling way more from the from the triple eight pins than it is the actual PCI Express slot. Huh. Okay, so so check this out here. Um, I gotta calculate this actually. So the peak power draw in Time Spy on the PCI Express slot was 63 watts, according to GPU Z, right? So 63 that means it was actually pulling 102 watts from the PCI Express slot. Um, now, it was pulling 100 watts from all three 8 pins, which is 162 watts. Okay, so what was the total wattage here then? Times 3 plus 102. So the total wattage was 590 watts. Um, yeah, that makes it, that makes sense. Probably could make it pull about 650 with the water block, but that did not fix the load balancing. Hang on a minute. So originally it was 125 watts from each eight pin, 85 watts from the PCI, 80 watts from the PCI express slot, 125 divided by 80. 1.56. Let's do 162 divided by 102. One point. Oh, it is the same. It's the exact same. Okay. Well, okay. So let me summarize what just happened then. Um, single shunting the further wind three removes the power limit. Single shunting does not reload balance it. The ratio of balance is the exact same. So it actually ends up pulling a hundred. This is also time spy. So you guys saw how little wattage it was pulling in games, which is fine. But um, if I didn't bridge that fuse on the PCI Express slot, it might have been a little sketchy. But um, double shunting the eight pin rails probably would have fixed the balancing, but I couldn't. It was just... Uh, the card wasn't working when I did that. So when I get a water block for it, we'll revisit this. Um, but single shunting the further win three completely removed the power limit, pretty much. Which is odd because it didn't do that for the Strix. Um, so no need to no need to flash the Kingpin BIOS actually. And what else? So the load balancing on the further win three is definitely broken. Uh, I wouldn't, so if I were you, I wouldn't single shunt the whole card unless you had like the EVGA, um, PCI Express booster or cause my board, my Apex has a, a Molex connector to power extra PCI Express slot power. That's why I didn't care. So, um, if, if you have supplementary power to your PCI Express slot, a single shunt is fine. Just bridge the fuse. If you don't have supplementary PCI Express power, you're going to need to find a way to double shunt the uh, 8 pins. Or you have to buy um, a resistor with half the ohm value. I'll probably do that, actually. Uh, I'll order some 4 milliohm resistors, and then I'll, I'll put those on the card when I actually get the water block. God knows when. So maybe a month or two from now. Who knows? But in the meantime... This works great. And it didn't really go above 70 Celsius. Like, so like, um, the air cooler on the further wind three can definitely handle 600 Watts of gaming. No problem. So, um, if you do have a further wind three, just make sure you follow the safety steps. Use glue in case you mess something up so you can have your RMA. Yeah. I would say project successful. I suppose it's too bad that I couldn't actually test these double shunts. Um, I really wanted to see if that would have fixed the load balancing, but this is just too fat to close the cooler on it right now, I guess. I say, I mean, I guess. So stay tuned for that one in the future video, I guess, right? Anyway, guys, that's it for this one. Uh, shunting a further win three is a go. Um, 
If you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, comment down below. Oh, when it comes to the comments down below, I can't guarantee the accuracy of responses that aren't my own. So if you ask a question and some random person on the inter internet answers it, uh, I like that's that's not me answering the question. So I like I, I can't like I can't verify the validity of it. Just, just keep that in mind. You should always keep that in mind going through YouTube in general. It's just a good practice. Um, anyway, comment down below. <laughs> comment down below if you have any questions. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.